Welcome to this tutorial on how to turn procedural planet textures into image textures that can then be used either for faster rendering in Blender or exported to other software like Unreal Engine or Unity. As an example, I'm going to use this randomly generated procedural planet texture that was created with my procedural planet generator, but pretty much everything shown here can be used for any procedurally generated texture. In this case, I've deactivated the atmosphere because it's volumetric and we cannot export it as an image texture. I'm also going to deactivate the cloud layer here for now and we focus on the planet surface. The process that we are going to use here is called baking, but first we need to UV unwrap our object, in this case the sphere, to tell Blender where each pixel should be placed. Luckily, Blender already did this for us and if we use the default UV sphere, it is already unwrapped for us. And now we have to switch to UV editing here and you can see here we have our uh, UV projection onto a two-dimensional plane um, already present here. Now all we have to do here is click on new to create a new image texture. We can call it um, planet diffuse for now. Now here we can set the resolution of our texture and for this we can also increase uh, the width by two and then we can see if we press on OK then that the UV map automatically adjusts to our texture size. Now all we have to do next is go back to our shader menu and here in the node editor add in an image texture node and here select the image texture that we just created, Planet Diffuse, and make sure it's selected and then we are ready to bake the texture. For this we go to our render properties here and down here and you can see there's a menu called Bake. If this menu doesn't appear here, make sure that you have Cycles selected and also in older versions of Blender, if you had GPU selected here as your render device, then it also didn't show up. You had to select CPU for that. Now down here, you can see we have many different options um, to choose from. This specifies the map that we want to bake and usually you want to bake at least a diffuse map, a normal map and a roughness map. And also you might want to use a specular map and a height map. But as you can see, there are no options for specular and height here. So um, I'll talk about them later in the video. First, for the color of the planet, we want to use the diffuse map. And here uh, we unselect direct and indirect because all we want is the color and not the shadows that are generated through the lighting in the scene. Because if you, I would select direct and indirect, then I would also get the shadow that is at the backside of the planet here on my image texture and we want to make it independent of our scene here. And now all we have to do is click on bake and wait a few minutes. Of course, the duration, the time you have to wait here is dependent on the complexity of the texture and also on the resolution, of course, and your, your device. The baking just finished. And now if we go to UV editing, you can see here that we have our procedural texture baked onto an image texture that we can then export to another software. And here, make sure that you save the image here and uh, then we can move on with the roughness and normal texture, which is the same procedure. We delete this from here and create a new texture, call this planet roughness, press OK and we can see the UV um, map is the same again. And here we can then go back to shading, select here our planet roughness map. And now here select roughness and click on bake and we have to wait again now. The baking just finished and now if we go to UV editing you can see we have our roughness map here and now we do the same for our normal map. Make sure to save the roughness map and then press on the X here, create a new image texture, call it planet normal for example and then we can go to our node editor, select the image node, select the normal texture that we created here and then here on the bake, select normal and press on bake and wait again for a few minutes. Baking just finished again and again if we go to UV editing you can see here we have our baked normal map ready and make sure to save it and then we can do a quick test to see how it looks like by uh, just deleting our procedural material and creating a new material here and then we can add in the image textures. So diffuse to color and then we can use roughness here, roughness to roughness and make sure to set color space to non-color and our normal map, set this also to non-color and then we need vector normal map and there we go, we have 
our procedural planet as image detectors. Now, of course, you can see that the resolution is quite bad if we zoom in, so you would have to increase the texture resolution to get results that look more convincing if you want to uh, use it not just in the background, but maybe from a bit closer perspective for your um, scene. If you now want to export this planet to a video game en engine like Unreal Engine or Unity, for example, you should also always export the sphere object here. So the UV sphere with the UV information that uh, is required to, to get correct texturing. And to do this, you can, for example, go to File, Export, and export it as an FBX, which is a commonly used format, and then just export um, the selected planet object, and then you can import it in your video game engine, like I'll show at the end of the video. And now we go back to our procedurally generated texture, because we haven't talked about the clouds yet. In this case, with my setup, the clouds are a separate texture on a separate sphere that is uh, not connected to the planet surface. And here, we, if we want to export them, we have to uh, basically do the same that we just did for the surface. Make sure that the cloud texture is non-volumetric. So in this case, it is just a black and white mask plugged into the alpha of a principal BSDF shader. And we can uh, bake this texture just like we did the other ones by going to v UV editing, creating a new texture, calling it planet clouds, set the resolution, and then press on OK. And then we go back here, add in the image texture again, select clouds, and then we go to bake. And here, click on the fuse and press bake. So baking finished. And if we go to UV editing here, you can see we have our clouds here. And then we have to save the image, of course, and then we can add it to our, to our planet here um, as an image texture. So for this, we just create a new sphere by duplicating this one, making it uh, slightly bigger, scaling it up by 1.05, deleting the material, creating a new one, and then we can add in our image texture. And here, we just need to use this as our alpha. So we click on this, and as you can see, we have our clouds here. Of course, the sphere is way too big right now, so we scale it down a bit, and there we go, we have our sphere um, our uh, planet with clouds included. Of course, as you can see here with our image texture map, we have these black triangles all the way up here and down here. And if we would just want a flat map of our planet, for example, then we cannot use this one. Uh, we want an actual map that is uh, full color and doesn't include these black triangles. And I quickly want to show you how we can do that as well. And for this, we have to manually un UV unwrap the uh, sphere and to do this we also have to make sure that in this case the top and bottom points of the sphere are not a single vertex but multiple vertices and we do that by just moving the 3d cursor to this vertex that we selected by pressing shift s and then going to cursor to select it and here we delete the vertex with x vertices and then we select the vertices here press e on the keyboard to extrude them and then we just put them to this uh, to the 3d cursor by going shift s again and then selection to cursor and then we keep it like that and we do the same for the bottom here we move the 3d cursor here delete these extrude them and put them here and then we have to select an edge loop where we cut the sphere basically so just with alt uh, select this edge loop here and then we press U on the keyboard to mark this as a seam. So this is the seam where the texture will be split. So this is uh, the left and right edge of our image texture then. So then we UV unwrap it by selecting it and with A and then pressing U again to unwrap. And as you can see, we have here our projection and we want this now as a nice grid on our texture. Now to do this, the easiest way is to use an add-on that uh, you can download for free on GitHub. It is called UV Squares and you, um, the link is in the description and you just install it like any other add-on. And then if you press N here on the keyboard, you can see there's a menu called UV Squares where you can just, just mark this all with A and then select to grid by shape. And there you go, you have this UV map now as a grid 
And you can also find the same setting here if you go to UV and then down here you have the same option here. Now we have to scale this up to fit our image dimensions and for this we can constrain this to image bounds and then just uh, scale this up so that it fits like this and then we just have to do the same procedure again and bake the image texture. So for this I'm going to use uh, a new image texture called this planet map for example and press on OK and as you can see here we have our grid and then we go to shading add in the image texture again and uh, select the map and then we go down here again select the fuse unselect direct indirect and click on bake and now if we go to uv editing you can see we have our map of the planet without the triangles here projected just onto a grid however you might get some distortions around the tips of the sphere here um, if you're using this method usually you also want a specular map for your planet because the oceans have a different specular value than the surface no normally but unfortunately here on the bake there are, there's no option for specular so we have to prepare our node setup manually to get the specular map that we want and to do this you have to um, look at your node setup and figure out where the difference between oceans and terrain is. Now in this case here, it is here on, in the terrain node, the oceans mask, which if I plug this into the material output, you can see here we get the white areas are the, uh, the surface and the black areas are the ocean. Now unfortunately, of course, uh, the oceans have high specular and the terrain has a low specular, so we want to invert this one and we do this, this by adding a vector I don't know, a converter math node, going to subtract here and setting this value to one and then plugging it in here. And then in here, as you can see, I just inverted this mask. And now everything that was white is now black and everything that was black is now white. So uh, we have for our terrain, a specular value of zero and for our oceans, a specular value of one. And I also have ice caps here. These have a specular of one and as you can see here, if I add the masks to the material output, we have it also the other way around, so we have to invert it as well. And now we have here at the ice caps a specular of one, and here where there are no ice caps, a specular of zero. And now we have to add these two together, and we do this by using the add node here and connecting these. And we have to make sure that clamp is activated so we don't get values higher than one. And now, as you can see, everything here that is terrain and not part of the ice caps has a specular of zero and everything else has a specular of one. And then we can directly bake this one and get our specular map this way. If you're having in-between values for specular here, you can always add an, an add node, for example, here and add, this, uh, add a value of 0.5 to it so everything that is black will get um, a value, a gray value of um, 0.5. So you would have a um, specular of 0.5 in this case for the terrain. Because we do not have a shader node here in between, we can also, instead of using the fuse here, choose emit and bake it, uh, bake an emission map. Now, and then we also have, like before, have to create here a new image texture called this uh, planet specular. And then going back in here, adding this as an image texture again. And then we can bake the emit map here, just like before with the other maps. And as you can see, we have our specular map here. If you also want a height map for your planet, then unfortunately you cannot bake it here, uh, just like uh, the other maps. And you can also not set up the nodes in a way that will give you a uh, result that you can bake like we did for the specular map because there is no actual height information here it's just a flat sphere and the height information is generated as like basically a normal map but what we can do is we can use an external software to convert a normal map into a height map for this i'd recommend using bounding box software's software called materialize which is available for free download link is in the description and here you can add in the normal map And then all you have to do is here on the height map, click on create. 
here you can specify different settings here for your height map and then click on set as height map and then you have converted the normal map to a height map that you can then use for uh, to generate height information. To save it, you have to go to saving options, select PNG if you want to use that image format and then if you just want to save the height map, you just go to here to S for save and select the file location and click on select and then it's saved. Just to show you how to import this setup into a game engine like Unreal Engine, I've made this texture setup here with the textures that we baked in this video and I've also made the setup for the cloud layer here and I selected both objects here together and exported them as an FBX file for Unreal Engine. Now in Unreal Engine, I've just opened up this default scene here and I made a folder called Planet. And all we have to do is if we didn't change the texture locations, we have to drop in the FBX file that we exported from Blender and click on import all here. And then we already have our planet here in Unreal Engine. Now, if we click on this material, you can see it looks a bit weird. That's because the order of the textures is incorrect. And here we have to make sure that the specular map is actually plugged into the specular and not into the roughness and the roughness map into the roughness and not into the metallic. And you can get rid of this connection by holding Alt and clicking with your left mouse button. And for the normal map, you also have to um, make sure that because we exported it from Blender, you have to click here on flip green channel to turn the orientation into the correct one. Then we save this. And as you can see, it didn't import the claw texture correctly. So we just drop in our claw texture here, add in the claw texture. And here we can set this to translucent, connect this to opacity. And there we go. We have our cloud texture as well. Save this. And now if we select planets and the cloud layer, we can drop it in here. And as you can see, we have our planet here in Unreal Engine and um, we can use it here um, in our video game. All right, that's everything I wanted to show in this video. If you are still having any questions about this procedure, please feel free to ask and leave a comment and um, have a nice day and see you in my next video.